uh, Hamburg uh, has the first digital service uh, via tablet uh, with a um, a blessing robot. I guess that's what Sagan's roboter would be, a blessings robot. Uh, and the picture, this thing is a uh, a converted automatic bank telling machine um, with sort of a little head on top. Well, here, I, uh, I'll let you figure out how to show it, <clears throat> but uh, there he is, um, called Bless U2, Bless U2, sorry. Uh, there, there he is, he, she, it, I'm sure... I haven't asked its preferred pronouns. It has not self-identified yet. Yeah. Though the face um looks <laughs> the face looks like it like it um is a refugee from uh a Halloween thing, uh to be honest with you. But <laughs> it's it's literally a converted uh, uh see bank automaton, a a ATM. Um, and 400 people attended this digital service and another 400 online, uh, via smartphone or tablet. And the speaker was, uh, bless you zwei, bless you too. Um, and so that's where you're getting your, your sermon from a converted bank teller machine. Uh, Obviously, you know, especially when you see it here with some of the stuff in the background and the candles and stuff like that, you, you just go, you know, once the essence of the faith is removed, nature abhors a vacuum, and so something's going to get sucked in there. And if you don't have any message anymore because you don't have an authoritative word from God anymore, Something's got to something's got to come in, and so much of especially European externalized, especially church uh, state based, quote unquote churchianity Christianity, has become as it's described deistic moral therapy therapeutism or whatever they call it. Um, you know, it's just pious platitudes. You know, I'm sitting here looking at this, realizing you know what it looks more like. Is a um, is a gas pump. It looks like a gas pump to me because you know, I feel like I could walk up, get the things on the side, stick it in my stick it in my car, fill it up. It might do that too. I mean, that would be another blessing. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Somebody in chat channel just said at least it wasn't a con at least it was a converted bank machine. It'd be terrible if it was non-converted. So it's it's a convert. So <clears throat> it it could have been. A Muslim or a Buddhist or or what if it was an atheist bank teller machine? Now that would really be bad. Uh, so <clears throat> anyway, yeah, that was uh, that was sent to me this morning, and I was just like, uh, it, look, obviously theologically, it does at least give me a moment to sort of say something about the current. Uh, egalitarian complementarian debate that's going on that clearly especially in southern baptist circles is uh, reaching epic proportions um when you talk about you know you know what if what if this particular um uh Sagan's roboter uh what if you programmed it? What if one of us sm snuck in there and programmed it with a Spurgeon sermon? I mean, a spot-on, solid sermon. Wouldn't that... I mean, what if you didn't have anybody that could even deliver something like that? Uh, why not? I mean, now you've got good stuff there. Is, is that any different than, 
listening. I mean, you can you can listen to Spurgeon sermons online. They're not even computerized voices. They're people who have who have read Spurgeon in sort of a British accent because they're probably British, um, and they're online. And so, what's wrong with that? Well, it's the context. There's nothing wrong with that. I've listened to Spurgeon sermons uh, while riding my bike and stuff like that, and there's everything fine and listening to Spurgeon sermons. And uh, you could probably get a blessing out of listening to Spurgeon sermons, but the issue is the location and what's supposed to be going on. And why does this relate to the egalitarian, complementarian controversy? And if you're not familiar with those terms, um, the two ends of the spectrum in regards to the role of gender, and of course, I'm using that term in the gender binary, men and women, um, in the eldership and in the function of preaching. And then you have to ask questions, preaching where? On a street corner? Behind a pulpit? On a Sunday morning with the... Um, Ordinances being practiced, Lord's Supper, and obviously there are all sorts of different takes and understandings today of what's right and wrong in that context. Now, I do recognize the, the giftedness of women as thinkers and teachers and speakers and all of those things. But I'm a complementarian, not an egalitarian, partly because I believe in the sufficiency of Scripture, and therefore, if Scripture wished us to have offices and individuals in offices, or even classes of people in offices, a Scripture is going to give us what we need to be able to do that. And clearly, both in, in both the pastoral epistles that address this, um, from Paul, the requirements and qualifications uh, are very clear as to who they are about. And so how do, you, how do you hold those two things together? I know lots of folks who will recognize that the qualifications that are given in Scripture are for men. Um, they will, there are others who will dismiss that as having been solely culturally relevant which ends up leading to looking at what the scriptures say about sexuality and marriage and everything else as being totally culturally relevant either. Um, but here's, here's what, for me, is sort of the missing, well, it's not the missing factor, people do mention it, but it, it's not central. Uh, to what a lot of people say on this particular subject. I believe that there is an exercise of God-given authority in the proclamation of the Scriptures in the gathered body of the New Testament Church. Now, once you embrace the idea that, and I remember very clearly years ago, I was at a particular church, and one of the uh, elders said, I'm, I'm so glad we've gotten past thinking there's anything special about the pulpit. And I thought to myself, hmm, um, see, I don't, I don't agree with that. Um, I think there is something special about the gathering of believers together in the purposeful uniting together to be in the presence of God and to hear his words spoken. And that's united together with the ordinances of the church, which are, I also believe are meant to be performed by the church. I mean, you can't have church discipline. You can't exclude somebody from the Lord's Supper if you don't have church membership, if you don't know who's supposed to be there and who's not supposed to be there. Um, and it is a, it is a church 
ordinance. It is not for you and your buddies to break out the grape juice and crackers in the backyard. Uh, you may think you've got the, where two or three are gathered. That's not what Jesus was saying. Um, that's a good way to rip scripture right out of its context and abuse it, but it gets done all the time. This issue of authority, to me, is the primary issue in trying to draw lines in regards to what is simply teaching, that is communication of data, and the authoritative proclamation of gospel truth that requires obedience on the part of those listening. That, to me, is the difference. Are you in a context where there is a necessary concept of obedience to what is being said? Is God's Word being set forth to God's people? That, to me, is where the dividing line is. And since so few churches even have the idea any longer of an authoritative proclamation of God's truth, then it's easy to see why that line is becoming completely blurred everywhere. And a lot of people are just going, ah, you know, that was just for back then, and we're going to we're gonna go a different way. And uh, so <clears throat> that, to me, is the, is the key issue, is um, the issue of authority. The issue of authority, that's, that's, that's central to me. So a, uh, a converted, even a Christian converted, <laughs> uh, bank teller machine spewing a Charles Spurgeon uh, sermon can communicate truth to you. God might even use that to convert somebody, but it's not the God-ordained mechanism whereby his word is to be ministered in the church authoritatively requiring obedience in the part of those hearing. Um, that's, that's where the, the difference lies for me. 